This is a tweet posted by my AI agent. Let's take a look at it quickly. It says, just played my first game of pickleball and it's all the racket. It's like tennis and ping pong had a love child and badminton was the godparent. If you're looking to hit something other than your midlife crisis, pickleball might just be your new best friend. And then we got one hashtag, hashtag pickleball life. That's pretty good. It was completely generated by AI, posted to my profile. It looks like a human wrote it. But what I want you to pay attention to is the length of this tweet. Now I'm gonna copy everything, throw it into a character counter, and we get 276 characters. This is just under the limit of 280 characters that Twitter uses for their API. If it was just one word longer, this tweet wouldn't post. So how did we get our AI agent to write something that was just under the character count limit so that it could complete its task. It had to be a little smarter than normal to craft something under specific guidelines. This is another tweet by the same AI agent. This topic is about fixing computers, and I want you to notice that the format is completely different. Instead of one hashtag, we get three. So this AI agent is smart enough to know when the text is shorter, we have more room for hashtags. In this video, we're gonna go behind the scenes of youraiagent.com. We're gonna see what's happening in the code so that we can get these successful outputs. And if you're not using this app and you want to build your own Twitter bot or even another AI agent in a completely different field, hopefully this video is gonna teach you something important something that we need to understand about large language models in order for them to work as intended. Let's get into it. This video is separated into two parts. In the first part, we're going to create a new AI agent that posts to Twitter. And in the second half of the video, we're gonna dive deep into the back end code. So feel free to skip ahead in the video if this first part doesn't suit your needs. All right, head on over to youraiagent.com. This is a web app that I'm building for you guys to give you a bunch of AI agents for your business needs. You're gonna enter your name, an email address, a password, re-enter the password, and then click sign up. It's gonna drop you onto the connections page. We want to integrate with X, so I'm gonna click this button. We need to name our connection and then provide a client ID from our Twitter developer portal. So first, I'm gonna call it my Twitter handle. That is at HeyWestFrank. And for the client ID, I'm going to click on this hyperlink. It's gonna drop you on developer.twitter.com. With a free account, you have the right to one project and one app within that project. So I created a project called Xbot. And within that, I have West GPT. Follow the steps on your dashboard to create a project and then an app. You don't need to worry too much about what it's asking you. But once you get to the app portion, we are going to scroll down, click user authentication setup. The app permission needs to be read and write and direct message. The type of app needs to be native. And then under app info, the callback URI needs to be youraiagent.com slash settings. And you can enter that same URL under website URL. To quickly get this, head back to settings. I have it right here. Just highlight it, copy, and paste it into these two input boxes. Okay, then scroll down and click save. Next, go to keys and tokens. And I'm gonna scroll down here. All we need is the client ID. So I'm going to double click to highlight this whole text, copy it, go back into settings, paste it in, and then I'm gonna click connect. It takes me to this authorization screen. I'm gonna click authorize app, and then it's gonna give me a notification that says your X account has been connected. I can click okay, and then we'll see it right down here under connections. I can rename it at any point or remove it at any point as well. Next, let's go to API keys. And we have a few options for our large language model. We have OpenAI. 
So that is going to be GPT-4 Turbo and GPT-3.5 Turbo. We have Gemini. That's Gemini 1.0 Pro and Gemini 1.5 Pro. The Gemini API is completely free for certain limits. And Gemini 1.0 Pro, the lower model, I don't think you'll ever hit that limit. That is a completely free alternative if you want an AI agent running for no cost at all. We also offer Claude. That is Claude 3 Opus and Claude 3 Sunnet. And you can also hook up an assistant created within the OpenAI developer dashboard, which has its own knowledge base, custom prompt, or features such as code interpreter. For this, I'm just gonna use OpenAI. So if you don't have a secret key already, click this hyperlink. It's going to take you to platform.openai.com. I'm gonna click create new secret key. I'm gonna name it XAI agent, click create secret key, copy this key, go back into my settings, paste it in, and then we're all hooked up. If this is your first time using the API from OpenAI, it's the same company that creates ChatGPT, go over to settings, you're gonna click on billing and add a valid payment method and then add credits to the account. It is pay as you go, but you need to purchase credits first and this will dwindle as you use the API. Last thing to do is head on over to subscription. I already have an active subscription on this account, so it just says go to portal. Yours will say subscribe, click it. It will take you to a secured Stripe checkout page. Youraiagent.com is $9 per month. That gives you unlimited connections, unlimited workflows, unlimited usage, and you can use all of these AI agents under one plan. Okay, now I'm gonna click on home. We have a couple AI agents available right now with more being added each week. I'm going to click on XBOT. It will take me to this XBOT task page. By default, my Twitter connection is up here. If you have multiple connections, you're gonna to need to select the one that you wanna use. So I'm selecting Hey Wes Frank. Now I need to select my text model. I'm gonna select GPT-4 Turbo. For my language, I'm gonna keep it at English. I want this XBOT to post at a random interval so it seems more natural and more organic. I'm going to keep this toggle checked. Now I need to enter some tones for the tweet. Let's do something like professional. I'm gonna go witty. Let's go funny, supportive, and blunt. For the topic, this particular business is about AI agents. That's what my X account is about. You would choose topics related to your business. I'm gonna write AI agents. I'm gonna write large language models. AI agent tasks, and then automating your business. Now I get to include a bunch of hashtags. Let's go hashtag AI agent, hashtag AI, hashtag automation, hashtag auto posting, and hashtag business agent. So what's going on in the background is, for each tweet, we're randomly selecting a tone, then randomly selecting a topic, and then randomly selecting three hashtags to include in our tweet. So we might get for the first tweet, blunt tone, the topic is AI agent tasks, and the three hashtags is hashtag automation, hashtag AI, and hashtag business agent. The more tones, topics, and hashtags you include, the more potential results you're gonna get. And if I added something like 20 tones, 50 topics, 20 hashtags, I could have this AI agent tweet almost forever because even if it hit the same tone, topic, and hashtags, it would still write a different tweet. These models are not deterministic by default. Everything looks good here, so I'm gonna click Start XBOT. It takes me to the Workflows page. I can rename this XBOT if I wish. We see the interval here, which is random. The type is XBOT. The connection, which is my Twitter profile. I can click on the info button. I can change any of these settings while the workflow is running. Add hashtags, tones, topics. But down at the bottom, I can see my past tweet. It looks like it was about large language models. I can see when my next upcoming tweet is. That's about five hours from now and I can see if there were any error logs for my connection. 
It's saying all systems operational, so everything is working as intended. I can click on this link. It opens up Twitter, and this is my tweet. It stayed under the 280 character limit. It used three hashtags, and it's already starting to get views. It had two views before I even got here. So what's going on in the back end? How are we writing this prompt, and how can we ensure that the Xbot will always tweet under 280 characters? Because if it goes over, the API call will break and you won't get a post. Your AI agent was created in Bubble. So I'm going to go up here, go to Back End Workflows. I'm going to select the Xbot. And then I'm going to hyper focus on this workflow. It's the post tweet portion of the entire process. So let's click on it. I want to make this video to show you guys that AI agents work best when there is human involvement. Maybe we don't need any involvement once GPT-5 comes out, but for these lesser models, we need to create the proper guidelines, sometimes make them mandatory, so not just within the prompts, so that it does what we want it to do. And if you add these human restrictions, you will get much better results than trying to prompt your way out of problems. So our first step of the workflow, we are using the post tweet API from Twitter. The authorization is our access token. So when I authorized Hey West Frank to use this app, we get a refresh token that refreshes each time to give us an access token. And the text part is the tweet. So don't be confused with all this text. I'm basically trying to format it. So if I click on find and replace, we're finding and replacing the exact same text just so we get access to this rich text editor. But this is the tweet that we're sending. So we're sending the tweet that we've generated with the large language model. In the previous example, we used GPT-4 Turbo. And then we're adding three hashtags to the post. Now, there is no way at this point to know if it's under 280 characters. We are just crafting the entire tweet. So that's the tweet with the hashtags at the bottom and then hoping for the best. Because I don't know what you guys are using for your hashtags. You could be using hashtags that are 20 characters long. I used hashtag AI, hashtag automation. These are very short hashtags. So it more likely will go through on this first step. But this isn't always the case. I'm adding an if when condition when everything that we have put together is under 280 characters, run this action. So it checks, make sure that this tweet is under 280 characters. If it is, it posts the tweet. But what if it's too long? Then we go to the next step. And if I go to find and replace in the next step, look at this, we have removed a hashtag. So we are manually putting our hands into this workflow to make sure we're under the 280 character limit. The only when condition is if this tweet, this tweet with two hashtags instead of three, if it's under 280 characters and that first step didn't go through. So the logic there is if the first step didn't complete, it was obviously over 280 characters then we post this second version of the tweet. The third step, you can guess it's the exact same thing, but this time it's only one hashtag, and it's the same thing. Is this entire tweet with one hashtag under 280 characters? If it is, and the first action and the second action didn't run, then post this tweet. So you'll never get duplicate tweets. It only goes down the line if the first one fails. And for the last one, we add no hashtags, it's just the tweet. With this four-step process, we're guaranteed a 95% success rate. Because like I said, the models are pretty good at following instructions, but they're not perfect. And if I tell them to write a tweet that's around 200 characters to make room for our hashtags, it does a pretty good job, but it still goes over sometimes. Can you see how some manual involvement, making multiple if-then conditions, we can always get the result that we want? Sometimes the tweet is going to have three hashtags. Sometimes it's going to be too long and only have two hashtags. It might have one hashtags or none at all. 
Now you're probably thinking, what if the tweet with no hashtags is still over 280 characters? Well, it doesn't happen often with my specific prompting, so I haven't added that extra step. But if I wanted to get this perfect, what would you do? Well, you could even add another step. One last step, I'm gonna go to plugins, add my authorization secret key, and for the content, I could go rewrite this tweet to be under 280 characters, and then I use the current tweet. And for the only when condition, it will only be when step one fails, step two fails, step three fails, and step four fails, we kind of try again. We realize that that tweet is not under 280 characters. Can you rewrite it for me? Sometimes the models work best when it has to go back and look at its previous work and edit it. Your initial prompt might have been way too long. There were too many instructions in there. It lost track of the character count instruction. So now we're gonna take what it wrote and chisel it down to what we need. You're never tied into one prompt. Remember that we can use prompts as chains, always tuning the results before it to get what we want. If you're curious where this idea comes from, OpenAI released a guide on prompt engineering and this specific strategy is called split complex tasks into simpler subtasks. In our XBot scenario, the complex task would be crafting a tweet using our intended tone, topic, and hashtags. And the subtask would be chiseling down that tweet so that it fits under the character limit of the API. If you want to create AI agents for your business, I'm gonna drop a link to youraiagent.com in the description below. I also designed an online course that teaches you how to build your own custom AI app. If you want to learn how to build in Bubble, connect all of the AI APIs, maybe make something like youraiagent.com or the XBot for yourself, there's gonna be a link to this as well in the description below. And if you like this video, I put two more on the screen right now. Both have been catered to your personal watch history. Give one of them a click for me, give it a watch, and I'll see you in there. Peace.